get this one. And I'm gonna try to give you a really quick demo. I, I feel a bit like I'm not really exhausted from all those people and noises. And it's the end of the day. Okay, so my name is Anna Kolter. I'm originally from Switzerland. I grew up with chocolate, cheese, yodel. I can, you don't have time for yodel right now. <laughs> so when my diet definitely has changed dramatically since my childhood. My background actually I mean, is art and architecture, but this has changed dramatically four years ago. And for me, this is a special thing here. This moment here in time and I t will tell you why. Exactly four years ago at this world ready way, I was sitting in this next room over there uh, with one of my best friends, Jeff, and listening to Mike Anderson. You probably know about him. He wrote a lot about cancer and how to avoid cancer and all that. My best friend there he had at that time already stage four pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And he was just really very dear to me. To me, I still, <laughs> as you can see, I still start to, to cry thinking of him because he was such a beautiful person. He was a shrink for the Santa Cruz prison system. And he just helped about anybody. He didn't just would take even homeless people in and help them. Since I never would have even the courage, you know, and he was so totally giving. And also when he was dying, he was so open, he was so luminous. I think it was one of the greatest experiences of my life to be a guide with him until he passed because with every day closer to death, actually, he became more luminous and really inspiring. So during that process, what happened is, of course, I tried everything to help him out to see if life can be extended or what can be done. So I studied about educates about kids can think of, I went to places and looked at all those alternatives. Also what happened is that shortly before he passed on Christmas, um, I made a promise to him to educate other people so do, they do not get cancer. And that's what I'm doing since. So in the four years, it really has accelerated. Uh, first, what I did first is to educate myself more. So I did an internship at the Gerson Clinic in San Diego. Many of you maybe know this is a, a famous cancer clinic. I went to the Tree of Life about diabetes and how to reverse the diabetes. I went to Alisa Cohen, I got certified by her in raw food, and so on. I just gobbled up whatever information and learning I could do. I work today a lot of time with uh, the principles of Dr. Foreman, and I work together closely with Dr. Adialto Oren. He's one of my best mentors, and he's also everywhere in my programs. And of course I learned a lot from Dr. Gerson. And this all together has developed in the Better World Cuisine, how I call it. Which the foundation of this cuisine is that you want to avoid inflammation. You want to eat in a way so that you do not get those illnesses. You do not get cancer, you do not get diabetes. Or if you're already there, you can still do everything you can to get better. Also, it helps, of course, with all the heart illnesses. It kind of all plays together. So this is the basis of better world cuisine. It's a cuisine which does not cause inflammation. So what I'd like you to do first is, Michael, can you help me out here? Sure. If you please take all one of those cards. Okay, uh, what, uh, what happened first, I was t I, give, I founded a school uh, where I give on a regular basis classes. I only ten, take 10 people per class because I want it to be served. I gotta give one more class this November and I put some information there. 
But at one point, I decided those classes are so much work for me that I want to bring the program to the web. And so what you see that the Better World Cuisine is also a web program. So if you want to buy the whole program, it's only 20 bucks, which is nothing for what you get. But the main thing why I'm giving you this is when you go to betterworldcuisine.com and you put your email in, then you get right away free recipes and a report. You get free videos of all kinds of stuff. So I figured instead of me printing here crazy recipes, please get it yourself. It's so much easier. See? And I want to show you today the first three recipes on, on, from what you get from the web. They're all super simple, but they're really powerful. The first is an anti-chunk food recipe. Mm -hmm. The second is an anti-diabetes recipe. Mm -hmm. And the third is an anti-cancer recipe. So that's what we do today. Um, by the way, yeah, since, since this started to roll, I have certified about over 200 wellness cuisine chefs here in the Bay Area. Um, I wanted to be certification classes because People respect you more after and take you more seriously if you're certified. Because we really have to teach each other not to get this illness. And I think it's it's just super crucial. Also, I organize a lot of events with Dr. Till Orton. We have several meetups. Our my husband said that I, uh, my meetup is in San Carlos, the Table of Life. It's a raffle meetup. And, uh, and you're all welcome to join us. Like next Sunday, we have first the Ruffy Potluck, and then Dr. Steve Blake is going to speak about herbs or so. There is always, we always have nice events, just so you know. Okay, so this is this. Now, I like, I have to. I'll be kind of thanks because I'm supposed to be out already by 5.30 because... 5.45? No, the Dixie told me different. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they have to prepare the dinner. So what I gotta do, I gotta really focus and, and so you get a lot out of it. First, about anti-chunk. It's obvious, anti-chunk means no processed food, really. It's actually super simple. You wanna avoid all those sugars. Uh, flowers, whatever, preservatives, or whatever. So I show you one of the simplest anti-chunk food smoothies. Most of you probably know this, uh, how to make smoothies. You just put in some greens and some fruits, and that's it, pretty much. Children love it the best with bananas. I show you my personal favorite. So this, I take here organic parsley, just the whole batch. Put this in, and in order to make enough for all of us here, I just put in a second batch. Okay, that's it. And uh, yeah, parsley works really well with pears, which I have here, mm -hmm. or if you don't have peaches. It does not work well with apples or so. You can try it out, but that's it. I, I like, yeah, this should be nice. Okay. Now, to make it a little bit more interesting, I like to add to this vanilla. Now, I don't know where, where my beans, but you know how vanilla beans look. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of vanilla beans, what I do, I buy the vanilla bean B grade, then I get them for about 30 cents a bean, which is really good, and then I buy like 100. You know, and then I take the whole bean, maybe cut the ends off a little bit, chop it up, put it in the, the magic bullet and grind it up, or a coffee round. And, and here I have the power powder of the whole vanilla bean. There is absolutely no reason to just scrape out the middle of the, or not use the whole thing. You know, so I'm a vanilla freak, so I use this vanilla powder just. <laughs> wherever I can, because I, I like the flavor so much. Okay. So now we add water to this. 
some kind of nut. I used here some hazelnuts and some dried flower, uh, some dried fruits. I like blueberries a lot, dried blueberries and often also dried pomegranate seeds a few. And then I add a lot of grated apples to this whole thing. And then spices like cinnamon, of course. Maybe a little pepper, whatever you like. You play with those things. And this gets all mixed with the fruit sauce. And then, it, this is so easy to do if you know about dehydration. Sometimes with the crackers you have to be all careful, you have to, you know, make it flat, nice. This one you just go, take your, a handful of the stuff, bloop down, spread it out, eat. So this is so super great because it really goes quickly and then you just dehydrate this. Uh, I use usually two days to dehydrate it because I do it at a very, very low temperature. So one day and then the, the, turn it around and then another day. Just so in case you know how this granola goes down. What temperature do you use? I go I go to 100 or lower in the middle I'm just paranoid about doing anything rancid, especially because I work with a lot of cancer people. Mm -hmm. You know, you do not want to have anything rancid. Also, as you know, you have to be really careful with flax, also with chia, all those things you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. They, you need to use them totally fresh at all times, you can make the re refrigerator or even freezer at all times, and just be careful. If you do flax, use it right after you do it. So this is the anti chunk fruit uh, part. So now I go to the second one, which is the anti-diabetes. Anybody was this uh, morning in Dr. Cousins? Uh, presentation, no? You know it? Okay, so what I'm going to show you now, can I have, I need to, yes, to empty this somehow. Look, here is another, you can empty it here. Empty it in here, then I get this. You don't need to wash it, you can use it right like this. But uh, what I'm showing you now is also a super simple recipe, which, uh, they use it the tree of life for, for the diabetes and uh, I have used this recipe with many diabetes people and it works fantastic. You can have this out, give it to people. They may be like a little bit more. Yeah, it's good. Good. You like it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Is anybody here who has diabetes? Wow, you guys are here. Okay. In that case, we, I don't have to go too much into what to do if you have diabetes, but it's still a really nice choice to prevent diabetes. <laughs> or if you have a friend which has it, encourage them to do this. If you use this choose just for a few days, your blood sugar drops dramatically. Mm. And uh, the, uh, somebody who injects insulin and all that, they have to be really careful in reducing uh, the dosage, what they're taking on medication, quite a bit because it will drop so quickly. I have never seen a diabetes 2 case which didn't uh, stay, brought his blood sugar down to normal in six days. And Gabriel Cousin could, uh, of course, prove that all the time. Are you saying just by drinking the juice? Mm -hmm. By just nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking about if you're a serious diabetes case and you're serious about want to reverse it, you can bring your blood sugar, type 2 diabetes, you can bring your blood sugar to normal in six days with no problem by just drinking this juice. This doesn't mean it's over after that. Of course, after that, you can't go out and eat seven like pizza and God knows what. After that, you have to go in a stabilization phase where you eat mostly just vegetables and nuts. And even after, at least for months, and then after that month, you start to add in more fruits and this and this. But uh, it definitely works. Uh, Michael is the living proof. He had diabetes quite a bit. And how long are you up? Three years, four years? 
no medication, nothing. But uh, somebody who had diabetes still has a tendency, if they're not careful, to maybe get it back. So what he does, he just always monitors uh, to make sure it's not high. And if he discovers, oh, I'm a little bit on the high side or the pre-diabetic side, he just makes one weekend with juice and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. One, I'm sorry, one week or one weekend? No, one weekend. If he thinks he's more on the high side right now a little bit, he says, okay, Saturday, Sunday, <coughs> just give me juice. By Monday, he's totally down. But for someone who's just starting out, they should do it a week? Yes. So, yeah, yes. But for all you guys which don't have any, it's still a nice thing to, to know about this juice, and it's also very cleansing, it's very detoxing, it, it, it does stabilize your blood sugar, it's a good thing anyway. Is it basically six days just like a juice bath yes. for six days? Mm -hmm. If you're interested in this, get Cousin's book, uh, There is a Cure for Diabetes, the 21 Day Cure Your Program. And he played this morning the uh, movie, yeah. yes. Rob. That, uh, that's the base of his treatment. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm showing you now in a practical way how to, how to do this juice. Super simple. We use organic uh, cucumbers, just the whole thing. And uh, the amounts really don't matter so much. Just use what you have. And you can vary all the time a little bit. It's just the basic principle is important. Uh, I can put in here a little more cucumber. This is my base. It has a lot of liquid cucumbers. What kind of cucumber is that? Just an organic cucumber. Okay. And now some celery sticks. The celery has a lot of natural sodium, so it's, it's very detoxing. And then, guess what else? Water. No, but... Lemon? <laughs> give me, yeah, give me clues. What makes this whole thing alkaline or so, or what is important? Oh, oh ginger. ginger! How can you, you know, for detoxification? Okay, so we put in some ginger. And you know, you can really try out uh, how you like it. You can put in more ginger or less ginger or more of this and that. It really doesn't matter. It's important, especially if you drink only this juice, that you really like it and really do it, right? Mm -hmm. So now, what, we, what is especially good for people which have diabetes are string beans. Mm -hmm. String beans? Yeah. yeah. So, I just put in a batch of string beans. The whole Why thing. string beans? <coughs> hmm? Why string beans? Honestly, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I know uh, I read this on multiple places, but I do not know exactly what is in the well, string beans. They're high in protein. I was just thinking in diabetics, maybe. That would help them during those six days, and then the high fiber. No. You should no. have as okay. you should no. <laughs> it should you should have as little as possible protein during that. Oh well, yeah, but the beans are different. Yeah. It's kind of different. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe it would be an interesting topic to research actually. Now, if you don't have diabetes, you definitely can put in a green apple to make it a little nicer. Maybe we, for this crowd here, we could put. An apple in. Then, yep. what is also really crucial is uh, the lemon, the lemon juice, it alkalizes so much. I'm cutting here a little bit much actually. For a diabetic, you would put in the lemon I would the apple? Yes, correct. No apples. Not in the beginning, after a while you can. Mm -hmm. and especially apples of Julian, they're really great. The green apples. Is a, is a really good thing. It's, it doesn't have much sugar in it. Much. It's it's a great thing. Okay, so that's it. And did you add water? What about a lemon? Mm -hmm. I put. The, I have the lemons here. I made lemon juice. Mm -hmm. I put that in after. I also have some stevia in here because a lot of 
diabetic people, they're sugar addicted, they can't stand any drink until it's really sweet, mm -hmm. but they should not have fruits during that time of adjustment at all. So this one actually, stevia even brings down the blood sugar level. Mm -hmm. So this, ha this is the only sweetener you can use to make it so you like it. But what type of water I hope do you I use? didn't. I, I'm, huh? What type of water do you use? Of, co of course, the best possible. Whatever. No, I mean, but do you have a, a water purifier where you are? Um, yeah, I personally have a whole house water filter. And when it's critical, like for cancer people, I distill the water. And then maybe add again some enzymes and whatever. But. Nice. Uh, but like with cancer, you really want to avoid the floor and all this reverse osmosis, whatever, most of them don't take it out. So the safest water is the distilled water. But you know, that's more what I want to do when somebody has cancer. But with diabetes, I probably would use just any good water. You know, okay, thank you. any filtered water. You have about you're running short on the Already? Oh my goodness. It's 5.24. Oh, okay. Okay, I speed up. you got six minutes. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. Let's go Okay. So, okay. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm blending this in the blender because some people, they do not have a juicer. Now, there is an easy solution uh, if you do not have a juicer. Where is my top? What oh, happened? Okay. You can, I blend this all up and then we can strain it through an oven. So this is such a simple solution. This, this bag is so super great. This one, uh, Eileen really Love developed this one. It has the corn around it, it's really great quality. You can make it here all your milks from whatever seeds and nuts you want, but you also can make from a smoothie juice. Like in this case, it uh, needs to have. get sick and tired of it because it's mostly time consuming to clean up. Right. And this is such an easy way and you can use the bag for so many other things. Of course if you are serious about choosing and want to choose more, especially if you have cancer or so, then in the other hand I would go for the best chooser possible. Like a Norwalk or so. Then I would never buy a kind of in-between quality juicer. I just think that they, they, they drive me nuts because it takes too long to clean them. So, okay, so we have this. Um, now I add to this some lemon juice. And this is really up to your liking, how, how lemony you want this thing. I put in a little bit of stevia, so it's a little sweet, but this is also up to you. If you don't need it sweet, don't put in, don't put any. Uh, you can we can hang this out, Michael. Uh, you you can put it in that chart. Yeah, okay. So now the, uh, I want to go to the cancer part. Uh, 
I usually try to eat raw when I can, but sometimes I just don't feel like raw. Like I think uh, vegetable soups are fabulous or little steamed vegetables and so. And the cancer people, they don't like all this raw. Right? Their digestive system is pretty sensitive. And also, many of them lose so much weight that it's good if they have a little oats or something starchy or so because they get so skinny and they just need those carbs. Now, the, the main thing with cooking is really that we don't want to crank up the heat. I love, personally, I'm crazy about this pot. I saw this pot in, uh, where, where was it, Michael? In, um, the very, Living Light Expo. At uh, the Living Light Expo. And this pot, and I was totally intrigued by the pot. But this pot was 800 bucks. <laughs> and, I, and but I slept the whole night over it. And the next day I went there and said, Michael, I want this pot. I don't care if it's 800 bucks. <laughs> you know, and it's, uh, the, this is uh, produced by Solid Master. It has platinum in it. It's better than steel, stainless steel. And it has here this, this thing where you can totally adjust the temperature to time. So this way, I'm able to cook any soup exactly at the temperature I want. So I make sure I never cook over boiling temperature, no matter what. And I'm so grateful I bought this thing. This is, except my raw food area, this is what I cook with. This is my only cooking pot I use for anything, and it's fabulous. Okay, so now I show you the, the soup for uh, for when you have cancer. This soup got or is originated from uh, by, by Dr. Gersten and in the Gersten clinic they give this soup to every cancer people before their meal every day. It's a great kidney flush and I'll tell you why in a second. So here are the main ingredients. First we use a celery root and it's good to clean the root well and treat it like a, a Chinese herb kind of thing. So don't cut the stuff off, the, those little knobs and roots. Just clean. I mean, if you can't reach anywhere and it's still has dirt, then of course you want to go in. But overall, I, I just soak it well in water with a little hydroperoxide. And that's a good thing to do for any vegetable when you want to be sure that they're really clean. Wash and the peroxide? Hydroperoxide, especially if it's not organic. You add it to the water, not pure. <laughs> yes. No, just a little bit. And let it soak it. So this this has like the celery sticks, the celery root. It's not the same plant. It's so is that supposed to kill the bacteria or the dirt or I don't know. Kills the bacteria. Okay. It, uh, the, the celery root, like the celery sticks, has a lot of natural sodium in it. So it really helps, it's a great kidney flush. And uh, Gerson thinks it's one of the most medicinal vegetable series. Yeah, so first, first is the celery root. Then next is leek, which is, has also a lot of medicinal qualities, but I also don't know the exact chemically why. Would this soup be useful for someone who is diabetic who is having issues, kidney issues? Yeah, the, that's good flush? for it. This soup is great for anybody. I'm just calling it anti-cancer soup because it's used in, in the Gerson therapy, in the clinic for the cancer people every day. This is the only soup they really hand out on a regular basis. And that's why I call it, but this is great for anybody. Since I figured it out and you know what? It tastes also really nice. And you don't need any salt because this gives plenty of flavor. So, okay. So a good trick with the leek is to split it in half that you really see that it's clean. So I put this in. Then to this recipe, we are some tomatoes. Okay, I don't have to cut it all apart because you, some tomatoes <laughs> cut apart. <laughs> Two organic 
bread potatoes. Who is the skin? Important is that you follow the stuff you with the skin. Some garlic. I have a whole batch of garlic. Onions. Red onions. Quite a bit of onions. And with this is skin on those? No, of course not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I'm just running out of time, so I kind of make a shortcut. Of course, you'll kill the rest of the audience. And just chop it big, you know, it's simple. And then uh, to flavor in the end, when the soup is done, you can add your spices you especially like. I, I like sage a lot, and uh, red pepper, and whatever. But so this now, the soup and water of course so you you cook this for at least an hour on very low temperature or the lowest temperature you can that can if possible not boiling so i usually do it on 200 and i can easily regulate i can give it here 200 and blah 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 and put it down so you never let it come to a boil no because we want to maintain as much nutrients as we can Right. So you're trying to keep it below 180 oh. degrees so that you don't kill the enzymes? Or? No, the, the enzymes yeah. are okay. Okay. Yeah, just to, to maintain as many nutrients as possible. <coughs> it's, it's, this is a give and take thing. You gain some of the nutrients because you soften this whole thing, which you wouldn't have if you just eat it raw. But, but on the other hand, you also lose some. But we want to lose as little as possible. So it's just always a good thing not to go beyond boiling temperature, whatever it is. You know. But so should, you, should you boil it at first and then lower it, or not boil it at all? Never boil it. It's like slow simmering. Simmering. Yeah. Just if, if you don't have a pan like this, just do it on the lowest possible on your stove. But there are also some kind of Things you can put on top of the stove, some kind of metal heat or diffuser. Heat diffuser to lower it a little bit. It's not, that's maybe a good thing too. Otherwise, just do it as low as you can, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when this is all cooked, I, uh, you can put it in a blender, so it's a really nice, smoothy, smooth, creamy kind of soup, and it tastes really nice. Or you can run it through a food mill. A person oh, yeah. would put okay. it through the food mill. Where did we but get the recipe for that? Have you got that recipe available? It's here. Oh, on your, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it? The recipe is exactly here. Oh, okay. Just, just go home, type in betterworldcuisine.com. Yeah. Bingo, you get an email sent with the recipe. Right. <laughs> and you get also a report. You get some other demos uh, for free where I do kale pomegranate salad or uh, a healthy cake or what is on the other one here? Whatever, you will see. Okay. You get a whole bunch of stuff for you also. Have you seen people get cured by having this diet here? No. And this is, this is part of the whole cancer therapy. Yes, I, in my opinions, and I also Gabriel Gabrielle Casabut, say that too, that Gerson is one of the best cancer clinics. They have about a 30% rate, uh, healing rate, cure rate, which is very high. And, but this is just part of it, otherwise they have to have 13 glasses of juice every day, carrot and apple juice and green juice, they have to do coffee animals, and, and there is a whole regimen going with it. But that's an important part of it. Okay. But we're not going to just get a heal from the soup alone. But I think it's it's also great to know those things, even if you don't have those illnesses. So if I make a what he did to me by knowing this, I'm just often I'm not just throwing in just any vegetable. I'm more conscious. I I put in the celery root first or the leek, and I'm appreciative of this vegetable and what it can do for me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, if you like to learn more about the cuisine which does not cause inflammation and also if you like to be certified, 
come to my next class, I'm going to give only one this year, and only 10 people. It's going to be in November. Where? My house. San Carlos? San Carlos. San Carlos. San Carlos. San Carlos. I love it because it's very personal and you get a lot of attention. It's very detailed, it's mostly based on nutrient density and the most nutrient rich foods plus also the most necessary nutrients. You learn all this stuff. You learn really a detailed understanding of how to truly eat wealthy. And you also learn that you don't need a whole lot of superfoods, this and this and this, that you actually just with using simple natural food, you cannot get this impact after you start. But most of all, you learn what to not to eat anymore when you go, when you attempt to.